All right. Great morning, great afternoon, great night. Welcome to 2024. Today on the Monday Morning Meetup, we're going to talk about resetting your life using this year to become one of your best years ever. So we're going to jump into that. Um, I'm interested in hearing how did your 2023, the last day of 2023, the last weekend of 2023 go for you? And how did your Christmas go? We haven't seen you guys since Christmas. Um, so let us know about that. So this to, on today's show of a Monday morning meetup, we're going to talk about how to get a reset on life. You know, I was thinking about this over the weekend and I said, there's some things that took place in 2023 that I want to see over again, right? At, at least to the minimum, and some things I want to see to the next degree, but then there's some things that I want to have a do-over on, right? And I think that there's, remember when you were a kid, and and I don't know about you guys, but we used to play this game, and, you know, whether it was hide and seek, hide and seek go hide and seek, or whatever it was, and you would always have that one person who would, they they technically were not a cheater, but they would say, no, 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 no. I want to do a do, I want to do over, right? I want to do over. I want to remember that. Why do we stop doing that? Like who says we can't do things over? Sure, as adults, we have responsibilities, right? We have other things that are going on. But at any moment, we could have a do over. We could say to ourselves, we don't even have to say it to the other people in our lives because they may think that that's a little bit strange, right? Hey, dude, you you know, 57 and you want to do a do-over, right? But in our head, we could say it. In our planning, we could say it. In our businesses, we could say it. In our workouts, we could say it. But in our eating habits, I made a declaration yesterday to do a do-over starting today. To do a do-over because some things, as far as my eating habits, didn't go the way that I wanted them to last year. And the first step is admitting it. It's like Alcoholics Anonymous, right? The first step is saying, okay, I'm admitting it, right? So, Caroline, if you're in the room, I actually don't see Caroline in the room. I was just speaking to her. Maybe she's not gotten into the room yet, all right? Let me know if you guys, are there some things that you're willing to do over, right, again? What are some things? And good to see you, uh, Cynthia. So good to see the gang all here. Faces that usually work on Monday mornings now. Yeah, absolutely. Happy New Year, everyone, says Lasan. Margaret, Happy New Year to all from Nairobi, Kenya. Good to see you. What time is it over there, uh, Margaret? Um, I'm so happy I can join you all today. George says he's usually at work as well. Look, and this gives you that chance to, you may not always be able to do the things that you want to do, David. I'm going to meet you out, my friend there. Good to see you, David. Right? But there's times when you can have those moments where you say, all right, I've got the availability now. Let me jump in and let me do this, as George just did, right? George is typically at work right now during this time. And he says, I'm going to go in. I know the Monday morning meetups are taking place. I'm going to be here. I'm actually going to to come in and spotlight myself because David, I, I saw where the camera wanted you. One percenters, absolutely, right? The, uh, George put in the uh, chat, happy New Year's three percenters and Cynthia and Rashan both came after him and said one percenters. This is the benefit of being part of this group is you always have people who are going to be there that you can land on if you happen to fall, but there's always going to be people that will lift you up as well, right? That's going to encourage you. Right, as Rashawn and and uh, and and uh, Cynthia just put into the group. So yesterday, what did your New Year's look like? Let me know in the chat. What did it look like for you? How did things go for you there? Did you stay in? Did you go out? Did you uh, have relatives come over? Was it a quiet night to yourself? A quiet day to yourself? Right. Did you cook? Did you not? My wife goes in and she, and this is a tradition that my mom used to have as well. And our house is, is typically usually really uh, kind of neat, right? There's only, um, well, there's four of us, but there's three of us. When my son's at college, my son Tyler, and then our two older kids, they each live on their own, right? So lots of cooking, says Lasan. So my wife goes in and she's running around the house and tidying things up. And it kind of reminded me of when my mom used to do this as a kid. 
And she's like, you know, you want to go into the new year with a clean house, right? You want to go into the new year in the direction that you want your year to be in. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that, right? So um, I go in my office and I start straightening things up and organizing things. Uh, Jenny says, I went to church and took a nap. It's a good way to spend your new year there, all right? Um, Namish says, dancing to live music at the pub in the village. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. We did something, well... We didn't go to a pub. So yesterday we we partied three times yesterday. So downtown Raleigh, they had like a kids drop, right? For kids. And uh it started at the bar. Well, we do an acorn because Raleigh is known as the um I forget what Raleigh is called, but they do this acorn. So at seven o'clock for kids, they had an acorn drop. So we took my nephew out there who's six years old. Um, it was kind of a spur of the moment thing. We had actually wanted to go out to dinner, but we couldn't get reservations anywhere. Uh, so we took my nephew out there and it was packed. I mean, there was nothing but kids and adults and they had food trucks. And um, we've got this long street, Fayetteville Street, where they just had, it was thousands and thousands of people. There was a Ferris wheel out there and there was rides and games and just everything. So it was a really good time. So we, we went out there uh for i want to say maybe about an hour and a half maybe about two hours and then prior to that we went to see the movie the color purple right so uh we went to see that and that took place at about we went there i think it started at well we went there at 2 30 because we went to one of these movie theaters where you can actually eat right have you guys ever seen that the movie theaters with the recliners and everything so you have to be there 30 minutes before the movie actually starts so that the service can come in and they can take your orders and everything else. So uh, we got there around 2.30, movie started at three. It was a long movie, two and a half hours. And I think my wife tricked me uh, because, yeah, you guys just gotta pray for me. Two and a half hours. Yeah, that's, a, but you know what, Cynthia, coincidentally enough, I did not go to sleep. It was a really interesting movie. Now I, I will tell you guys, look, I typically refrain from watching movies. Um, this this was not the movie about this, but I typically refrain from watching movies about slavery and um, about that story because I'm like, shit, it doesn't change. Like I know the story. I don't want to be inundated with it. And it doesn't, there's not a, you don't get a good vibe out of it, right? When I watch those types of movies. And my son and I, and uh, actually Lenny the boss, we were having this conversation. Like we know the story, so I don't want to go in and repeat that over and over and over and over again. So when watching The Color Purple, there were pieces of it that included things like uh, rape, right? So the young woman ended up having, um, uh, it was a really graphic. They didn't show it, but I, from what I hear in the original movie, they do show it. So the young woman ended up being raped by her father, ended up having babies twice, and the dad taking the babies and selling the babies, right? So that was one part. And I'm like, oh, God, Jesus, so I knew that this was in there. I probably would have not. Um, and then the other part was one of the, one of the, I want to say one of the characters in the movie ended up there was a lot of racism in this part right at the very beginning. So she ended up going to jail and being treated unfairly. And that part, I'm like, oh, my God, even that. So there was a lot of graphicness at the very beginning. But then after that, there was some light in it, right? So I'm like, okay, the, the first maybe hour I could have done without of it, the hour and a half after that was fine. So... I'm not sure if you guys are a Color Purple fan. I know that that movie has like this cult type of following. There's people that really get into it, which is why they remade it. Steven Spielberg, I think Oprah Winfrey, um, Quincy Jones did part of that trio that came back and remade it. So other than that, you know, so we went to the movie. Then after that, we went to the seven-year-old ball drop. Then after that, we went to uh, my wife's... We, I want to say we went to, and hopefully if if they if anyone sees this, they don't take this the wrong way. I said we went to three parties. One was the kids' party. One was the sinners' party. And one was the saints' party. And when I say a sinners' party, I mean 
alcohol and they're just having a good time drinking, right? And adults fun and stuff like that. So we went to that party and, and I don't drink, right? Everyone knows that. And I almost, I almost drank yesterday because there's this big thing of lemonade that's out there. And I'm like, oh my God, this looks like fresh made lemonade. I'm going to go in and I'm getting some. And I'm about to fill my cup up. I'm a quarter way full. And everyone says, no, 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 don't drink that. And I could actually smell the alcohol coming out. You know, when something's so, so, so strong. And we ended up having a joke about that. Luckily, I didn't taste it, didn't put it to my lips. So that was the the saint, the sinner's party, right? Alcohol, fun, lots of laughter. We stayed there for about an hour and a half, playing a lot of great games, cool games that I didn't even know existed. Um, and then we went to the saint's party, right? House full of churchgoers, great people. And they also had board games that they were playing and, and we ended up having a really good time. So both parties were really good. All three parties were really good. Didn't get home till about, we had about an hour drive or so. Didn't get home until about uh, two o'clock, went to sleep maybe about 2.30, woke up at about six. So here I am, three and a half hours, four hours worth of sleep. And I see Caroline just came in as Hello. well. Hello. Yeah. Good, great, yeah, I tend to be day. listening to you um, talking about that movie. I remember that movie. Um, I found that really, really uh, hard. I had nightmares after that movie because it's so there's so many parts of it that are sad. And Cry Freedom's another one, you know, that I... Oh, wow, okay. Um, the Denzel Washington and Cry Freedom. Oh, my goodness. It was uh, really hard to watch it. Um, so I can't watch things like that anymore because they just upset me for like weeks afterwards. So I'm a bit like you on 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 that one um, in yeah. terms of, yeah, it's got to be something like, I know it's not a movie, but Brooklyn Nine-Nine type for me, stuff for me yeah. nowadays because I get so affected. You had an exciting new year. Yeah, <laughs> really exciting. Three parts to it. Yeah, and on your voice note, it sounded like a big party um, was going on in the in the background last night. Um Mine was a bit quieter, so we had. Um, mine was a lot quieter. Um, hello, everyone. You got to get out and party sometimes, Caroline. I, yes. I take you as a party yes. person. You don't party much. No, I just work. Um, I I used to, but I I tend to be. I don't know. I have, because we were away at Christmas. I tend to now need time alone. <laughs> you know, um, but we. Um, I sort of am a mid-range party person. I'd say. I used to be a big raver, you know, not so much now. Um, so the we had really quiet, like crazy quiet, sort of watching the fireworks on the TV with mum, who's not not well, and had some friends next door that wanted to bring champagne round. But I sort of fended them off because mum sort of wasn't yeah. good, you know. Um, so she was going to go home at 10, but we ended up, she stayed, which is nice. And then I took her home at about 1 a.m. And then the idea was I'll just come home and have a glass of champagne with Anisha. Um, and she hadn't really had any. And then go to bed. Oh. And we just ended up partying, just the four of us, me and the kids, with, a, with two bottles of champagne, although I think we had about three glasses each and it was far too much. Right. Um, this was strong champagne. Um, and then just, you know, dancing and I had this like, random party in the in the room but it was really great it was quite it was very quiet really but um it was really great because I don't often get to pin Anisha down to my eldest for those those people that don't know um my family to have long conversations with her she's not a big talker when yeah. it comes to work and she just decided she was just gonna like tell me everything about the whole year everything she's you know all the all of her friends and a uh, new guy, you know, um, and all these different things. And I just sort of sat there and we just talked for hours. And then we're like, oh, my God, it's like 7 a.m. <laughs> I'm going to go to bed. I've got the MMM tomorrow. So it was. Uh, wow, you it, talked till 7 a.m.? Yeah. Well, it that was, is really cool, though. Well, it was like five. But then mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, gosh, I've got to sort, sort the house out because I hate my house being untidy. Yeah. Everything's got to be right. I can't wake up to anything. So then I cooked. We'd cooked and everything earlier um, and we'd cleaned up some, some of it, but it wasn't my to my standards. So I sort of stayed up and did chores. And by the time I got to bed, it was about 7 a.m. I thought I'm gonna, I was meant to start the new year mm -hmm. with early nights, but that's going to be today. Cleaning up, decluttering and everything is today. 
because I had actually a really interesting thing that happened to me on Boxing Day, which is the 26th of December for you guys. We I thought about you guys at, at, at yeah. that last we week. We celebrate yeah. Boxing Day big time, but we were away um, in the in the forest. We were away at this resort that's lovely. We've booked me and Maliha booked to go back there in two weeks to work from there. Um, and then Indy will join us every day after school. Um, so we had such a good time. But we, um, I had like a really amazing book that was in the top, you know, few, um, not on the whole of Amazon, but it was in the top 1,000. It was just over 1,000. And this book's been going so, so well for months. Wow, nice. Cool top, top book, you know, really good. It's like, oh, yeah, this is good, you know um great end to the year the last few months of the year and uh and then on boxing day i get a lovely email from the kindle content review team and every time i see one of those i go oh all right stop me <laughs> yeah um i've got no 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 i don't do anything wrong you know i'm really careful um and they 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 took down my book because oh, no. of uh, infringement copyright with a cover, and we we all know that that obviously isn't the case. So my poor team all jumped on on Boxing Day. They don't celebrate it mainly in the US to help me. Um, and my Facebook ads person, who you know, dropped in, and uh, we put another book out there. With we stopped all the ads on that book, you know. Um, and then I spent, I literally spent every day since that trying to get that book back. We wow. sent legal documentation. I had a lawyer look at it um, uh, that I know. And so it was a bit crazy, but it just shows you. It, it's again, just another eye opener where you think, oh, okay. I'm going to look at other ways of doing some of my books so that I've, uh, Amazon are great, but I want to go wide with a series and try that out you know, yeah. and do a few different things this year. But it, probably at the beginning of the year, I would have had a meltdown about that. Because of course that's going to affect, you know. And I thought, okay, universe, I'm ready for you this time. You got me back in February, but I'm ready for you this time. What should we do? So what do we do? We got a cover quickly done and we got a box set out for that same book within the box set. Um, and then I pushed another book, which went, really well as well so it was a great opportunity to just you know at the end of the year to just uh sort of pivot again and think okay you know it's very annoying when these things happen but it's just a machine that that pushes um uh these books through the book was fine and the funny thing is the same images and everything were used for the rest of the series and the paperback and they're all there it's crazy it's crazy so if any of this, if this happens to any of you guys, because it does now and again, it always, it's happened before when I was at the top with a book. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is someone <laughs> on the content review team that doesn't like me. Um, and so we're, we're going to get this back probably in the next few days, but it's taken every day sort of sending things off. But it was just a great lesson in yeah. never, you know, just always making sure, and we had, that you've got lots of different streams of income. And that, for me, at that point, that meant multiple books that I could push. So we got a, I've got another pen name. We went hard on that, on the ads, and took off the money, obviously, that we were spending on the other one. And that's doing really well. So that got me thinking about that pen name more. So it was really, really good. And for some reason, the, the exciting thing about this, actually, just for those of you that are publishing, is... It would, couldn't have happened at a worse time because it's a Christmas book. <laughs> um, oh, but it couldn't yeah. have happened at a better time because clearly up until the 26th of December, masses, thousands of people had probably, well, not thousands, but hundreds of people had downloaded the book ready to read. Um, mm. Now, if they've already got the book and they've downloaded it because they've got Kindle Unlimited or KDP Select, it actually... Um, if they've already done that, then it actually, uh, it stays there on their Kindle. So I'm still getting like 20,000 reads a day. Um, on It's dwindling now on this book. So loads of people must have downloaded it. Yeah, prior to um, it. Yeah, yeah. But then there'll be a lull, obviously, when it goes back on, because all those people would have caught, would have caught up. So book two is doing better because of the, because of that, that incident. But it just got me to just sort of, 
I thought I'm going to cover this in the fast pass training when we have it tomorrow, because it also just got me to think we just, you know, make sure that when you put covers on Amazon and you might be using AI, this wasn't an AI generated one, um, that you just keep in touch with your designer and make sure you've got all the dots um, before of, you know, you need their subscription to Canva or Shutterstock or whatever they're using, you know, just make sure you get all of that in advance don't just use somebody randomly that you can't then contact afterwards um, on Fiverr. Just make sure you, you they agree to giving you that information beforehand because she was able to step on and just send me everything. You know, to prove every that single you did subject. that it was unique. Yeah, was and the yeah. images, yeah, the images that weren't were just some little tiny little squiggles mm -hmm. um, that she'd actually bought those. You know, so she sent me all the invoices. Great person. So just whenever you're working with freelancers, just make sure that they know about potential things that could go wrong and make sure they've got your back. Because my whole team jumped on during the Christmas holiday. My VA yeah. helping me, telling the readers, you know, just jumping in because our Wi-Fi was a bit limited. The designer jumping in. She's in Australia. Um, and the uh, Facebook ad manager that I hire. They've just got in. I mean, I, I could go in and do stuff on there, of course, but I stopped the ad. She went in and got this box set ad out straight away so we could release it straight away. Um, we just that turned speaks, that around. Yeah, that speaks to having people that are serious, right? So so someone was asking me about some of my goals this weekend in this group that I'm in. And I said, one of my goals is to really just make sure that the team, we got a great team now, but the team that I'm with is a, is, is a small group of serious individuals yeah right? small group yeah. of committed serious individuals that know the vision and are that are ready to work as a team to move forward with the vision doesn't take a lot of people yeah no, and you know what I know, I know we're talking about goals and today we're going to talk about you know starting the new year with a bang but it also was interesting because I um one of my big I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. I'm just yeah. continuously mm. trying to get better, you know, every every week I set new goals and make make you know major mistakes as well, believe me. Um, but I um I decided that one of the things that I really would like to work on, and it is it is something I need to work on, if I'm really honest. I mean it's pretty mild, mm -hmm. um, but it is significant because it affects your frequency and your vibration and that's the way I react to things um and because of the way that I reacted this year when disaster struck in the business was pretty much in quiet it was pretty bad you know mm -hmm. it was all right sort of standing on a Monday morning meetup and going yeah everything's great but it, it was really not great my reaction because what I did is I I brought that into the rest of the year I kept talking about it Kept talking about it because I was trying to help people, you know, not experience it. But I kept adding momentum to it. Um, so one of the things I thought is I'm not going to react uh, to anything, you know, even if the kids do something or whatever. Yesterday, the shower just like exploded. Um, and I was like, ah, because I was in the shower. And I thought even that, you know, I've got to just like not react. You know that time when you had a snake outside and you're like, hey, yeah. you know, I'm just in the shower. <laughs> Right, right. My like family's that. down there having a panic attack, right? Yeah. yeah. I want to be more like Ty. Um, so that was that was the plan. So when this book thing happened, I'm like, okay. <laughs> what do you normally react like? Shit, you know, <laughs> going crazy. So I just said to the kids, you go to the pool. Just let me uh sort this out. I just need to sort this out. If I go to the pool, I won't enjoy it because I gotta just like act quickly. Um, and I just sort of thought, okay, this is a good test. The universe always does that before something big, great happens, you know. Okay. And so my reaction was like, no problem. We've got this. You can't beat me, you know. Um, and that was no, very diff different to normal. Because normally I just, you know, shouted and then probably cried. <laughs> so that's a that's a big thing because I think if we can learn to just not react, very difficult, but not react uh, so strongly to things that happen in life, whether they're in our personal lives or in the business, that's a really great move to sort of keeping in that space of, you know, a higher frequency because it helps your confidence then because you don't feel so vulnerable. You think, OK, well, that's happened. What's that taught me? It's taught me that I need to inform the people I teach. 
mm-hmm. in the community to just watch their backs um just sort of have several books available several options and pen names but it's also taught me that um i need more streams of income i need income off amazon as well which i have but you know and i'm building that i need to build my courses you know i need to do all these things that i've set myself to do because it's about some if something goes temporarily you've got to have Absolutely. something yeah. else in place if you especially if you're the breadwinner you know mm-hmm. um so it's a really great exercise in the end of the year to sort of share because life is the more i think about it the more i think life is just like that um great life never stops life in it's life 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 never stops life you know it's something about being um just being conscious of what's going on as you know like this year that's something that i've worked on a lot this year like well last year 2023 is just being more aware more present of how I'm responding to things, how I'm reacting to things. I thought that I've always been someone that's pretty calm when it comes to certain things, but we're all human, right? So everyone does, you have those moments. But this year, more than ever, I've been really intentional about analyzing things, taking myself out of a situation, looking at it as if I'm the second individual and just giving it a moment. Oh, there's an emotion there. Oh. There's a feeling there and kind of just really looking at it and thinking about it and, and saying, well, you know what? I have the power to react in the way that I want to. I was having this conversation with my son, Tyler, and my daughter, Summer. We were having this family conversation last week. And we get into these family conversations that go sometimes for two hours and not just different things. I was talking about, look, when you start to react in a certain way that's that that you think is beyond your control, you give the control to the individual or to the thing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So yesterday, there's a perfect example. So we, we, we had this spur of the moment day planned out. So I'm going in, I'm making breakfast. I left my office yesterday and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go and make breakfast. I'm going to do it in seven minutes. So usually I'll time myself to, to, on something, right? So I know you guys are thinking seven minutes is nuts, but yes. So I'm like, I'm going to go in. I'm going to make breakfast in like seven minutes. Well, make breakfast for everyone or just you? For just me and my son, uh, Tyler, because yeah. Summer's not here. She's at Disney World right now. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, and yeah. New Year's in Disney World. Nice. Happy princess. And uh, my wife mm-hmm. doesn't really do breakfast in the way that uh, me and my son like to do breakfast. So I went in. I got this plan. I'm black and rolling. I got the pot going. I got two pans going. And I'm just ready and then my wife comes down and in preparation for the New Year's festivities, she wants to make uh, Prosecco. You guys ever heard of that? Prosecco? It's like, a, I don't know what the hell it is. A champagne or something? Prosecco. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we've okay. heard of that. <laughs> what is it? Is it a, it's a champagne, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like a sparkling wine. It's like a... Yes. Yeah. So she yeah. comes down. I got the fires going and everything. I'm in the zone. I'm focused. Comes down. I want to make these Prosecco drenched frozen grapes. Right? Yeah, yeah. Can you open this bottle of Prosecco? So I'm like, she's trying to steal one of my seven minutes here. Stay calm, Ty. <laughs> and I am anal when it comes to stuff like this. Anal. Yeah. Right? So I said, okay, I'm going to, this is fine. I got it. Black Superman, I can do it. This bottle of Prosecco was the devil. In the form of a bottle of Prosecco. Do you know it took me like 15 minutes to get this thing open? Usually opening a bottle of champagne would be seconds. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea what was going on. Murphy came in yeah. and form of my wife and said, here, open this bottle of Prosecco from hell. It must have been crazy glued or something to cork. Right. And so my pots, are, my pots, my pans are going there. Fire is going. I'm feeling myself starting to bubble up. And I said, OK. I started laughing. I just started laughing because I've got a, a kitchen towel. I'm trying to open this damn thing. I'm YouTubing videos. Easy way to open champagne. This is a nightmare. <laughs> and I start feeling it where I'm like, 
Mel, I, I felt like I was about to say, Mel, do you really need this freaking bottle of Prosecco right now? I'm trying to get things. And I just started laughing. Yeah. And she said, what are it's you like, laughing about? And it's the, it's the small things, isn't it? I mean, I do all the time. I mean, gosh, you want to live in my world, um, me and the kids, I'm always timing myself for different things and it never yeah. works out. I mean, anything goes, you know, when you've got three teenagers well Anisha's not a teenager now and but she's home a lot um it's just the flexibility you have to have I mean it used to send me um stressed out big time but now you know have a plan um and anything goes in the kitchen you know all those sorts of things but you're very much like that yeah you time yourself don't you and that's really really yeah. interesting yeah really good but not um, always because so, you do need to just free flow things sometimes too yeah yeah but, but it, that we had to be out of the house at, at 1 30. so i'm like okay it's it was like it was uh we had to be out of the house by 1 30 in order to make the movie and everything else right so i had about had 45 minutes plan. So yeah. i'm like i'm gonna go in breakfast seven minutes i could eat it in like eight minutes i can go back and do some things on a computer because i knew we were not going to be back until like the day was shot and here comes Mrs. Murphy with this. I didn't even drink. So I didn't see the importance. I'm like, do you really need Prosecco, Mel? And you know, the weird thing is, it's like, it's those little things, isn't it? It is. Th yeah. Those are the things that we react to internally, even if we don't just sort of lose it in front of the somebody we love. It's those little things that just edge away and chip away at your, at your frequency and your your high vibes. It's weird, isn't it? And it's it's happens all the time. And it's those times when you if you can take a stop and a check, and they happen all the time in business, don't they? I mean, like, what the hell? All the time. <laughs> what the hell are you doing to a business? And I get really like that because I want everything a certain way. Um, but it's those sorts of things that all you're doing is you just like, you know, you may as well just stand like this with a gun at your head. You're just sort of chipping away, aren't you, at your own um vibe and i think when you can sort of take a step back going whoa i'm doing that thing i do you know yeah. um what you're doing ty or caroline um that's then laugh laugh about it then it's it it just is sort of part of the whole sort of making it not turn into something where you start to resent the person because they've stolen your time and so that's ex so good point right so i want to kind of touch on it because that's exactly what happened and as you start to become more and more aware of your thoughts, right, as to what's going on, then you can change them instead of Cher has a great song. Right. And one of the lines is if I could turn back time. Right. Yeah. You can't turn back time as much as we wish we could. But what we could do is we could be in control of a moment so that we don't have to get to a period where we wish that we could turn back time. So as, as I'm in the moment, when you start to get really good at this, you could really freeze frame this stuff. So I'm starting to, I, the right before I'm starting to bubble up, cause I was just going to just go nuts, right? The, the champagne wasn't the only thing that was going to bubble up, right? I was going <laughs> to bubble up over this damn thing. I said, you know what? If I just say the wrong thing, it could really ruin the rest of the day. Yeah. Just if I just thing. say the one, one wrong thing, Mel, what the hell do you need Prosecco for? Frozen grapes, Ty. I mean, you really need to get with the times, you know? Right. <laughs> and those frozen grapes actually were the life of the party last night, right? Yeah, but I if, bet they were. If, yeah. if, you have to get if, them at a certain time, whereas they don't freeze. You know, she had to put them in at that time. Yeah, that that logistically, I have no idea how that all works. But I did know that. Look, if I just said the wrong thing, we could have went into twenty twenty four on the wrong note. And as I was talking about at the very beginning, right? How Mel it's and my so true. talk about making sure you're going into the year with what you want. I don't want turmoil in my relationship going into twenty twenty four, right? So it's just it's being so this thing benefits you in so many different ways. My son Tyler was with us. So he would have felt the non-communication between the two of us in the car or something like that, right? Or whatever. Yeah. And he just had a great time. But yeah, imagine if I would not have been in control of... It takes two, three seconds. And you know what? It takes practice to get that control as well. Um, yeah. It really does. Because I we were away in the lodge. And when I've got lots of people around me, you know, I... 
I am, you know, I know people don't say you're not, but I am an introvert. And mm -hmm. so I, I need space. Um, and I said something, I can't remember what it was. I think it was something to, I think it was something to Anisha. I said something, um, hardly anything. And she took offense. And then we had this awkward conversation and the whole vibe changed. So I thought, okay, I'm adding momentum to it by trying to sort this out and say, you know, I didn't mean that. Um, but it was just one tiny thing. And there's few uh, things like that happen when you're in a group. Uh, families are the worst anyway, this sort of thing. Normally, we don't have any of that when it's the four of us. But when you bring in their, their dad joined us as well on some of the days um, and you bring and my mum was unwell. So she's pretty uh, unhappy as well. Pretty down, you know. Um, so when you've got like loads of things going on, a bit of tension, um, there, it was just something so minor. And afterwards I thought, why did you say that? You, you were actually joking, but she didn't take it. I can't remember what it was about. It, maybe it was about a bottle of Prosecco. I don't know. I don't even remember what it was about. It was so trivial. It wasn't about anything important, but it was, it was off, you know, and I don't say things normally that are off. I'm very careful what I say to my children anyway I can't remember what it was I think she just wasn't helping or something and I moaned at her um it's fair enough uh but it was about then how I felt afterwards I felt awful and the vibe changed and I thought afterwards I could have just not said that um yeah. so I think that it, it you know that's sort of being conscious of not not having to you know the, we, we never want to not be ourselves and hold back and dumb down our personalities just because we're different to the other person we're spoke, speaking to. But I think there's something about just thinking a little bit more, Caroline, about what you say sometimes, because it's so easy just to put words out there yeah. um, and you can't edit it. Uh, you know, you say something wrong if you're doing an event, well, not live, but if you're doing something recorded, you can just go back in and edit, edit it, you know? Um, uh, you can't do that in, in life. So it was a good it was a good lesson in just just be, you know, just make sure that you're 100 percent kind all the time. If you might be grumpy about something, I think it was the host of the book. It's a bit grumpy. I felt grumpy inside, said something. Um, and so, you know, it's important, isn't it? Just to check ourselves and then just always think about the impact that we have on, on others. I have to do this sometimes with a team because we have we use Slack. Yeah. an app that you know you and I use in, in the, with the team and and I use that in my own publishing team and sometimes I'm like powering out these messages um and Maliha will say to me like, she's come on the call actually she'll say to me something like mm, it's a bit you're a bit you know do this do that <laughs> sometimes to people and so I'm like okay yeah yeah it's a bit I, I go back to sort of what you had to be like in a law firm. I can be a bit authoritative like that. Yeah. So then I make sure that I'm just, thank you. I do appreciate you. You know, just I'm like deadlines there, do this. We've got to do this today. Can we make sure we're like this? And you, you know what that's like, because you have to do that during a live event. Yeah. You, have, you, you know, everyone's going to work really hard, but you have to say things like, can we make sure we give it our best today? Could you just yeah. do things like that? Don't you? And, and I'm you can assume like sometimes that. too. Yeah. Yeah. And um, you have to and, remind people as well, but there's there's the way, right? The approach. So. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's about just being mindful. I'm sure everyone is here anyway. This mm. is something, um, you know, being mindful of as we go into 24, um, just thinking about how we're reacting to things. And it normally is those small things um, where we get irritated and then we just affect the day. Um, and or how the, we can a control. month. Or the or year. The month. Yes. Or a lifetime, yes. right? Yes, for many people. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for many people. So I think yeah. that is is so powerful when you think about that in business because it really is just those little things. You know, if you wake up with a headache, it's because of the little things. You might have been having a little moan the day before. It's so powerful. Yeah. But I think once you control those thoughts, when bad things do happen, you know, we all experience it. We lose somebody we love. Mm -hmm. um something happens in the business that you just couldn't have stopped you couldn't have well you probably could have done with your vibe before but something happens and then I think if you can control the little things then it just makes you feel powerful like you said rather than feeling vulnerable like things are just happening to you and you can't control any of it when you can control your thoughts and reactions then you literally can control your life Yep, you, you know, literally can't. You literally can control your life and how you respond yeah. to things and everything, you know. And and 
I when I used to work at Walgreens Pharmacy, right? This was uh and I probably I started when I was in my teens and quit when I was in my early 20s. I remember one of my supervisors, his name was Italian, great Italian guy, Vinny Cito. And we were having this major crisis at at the workplace. And you know, I'm he's like, I'm I'm just taking it really calmly. It's a major crisis. I forget what it was. But he said, he just looks at me and he's like, dude, you just never panic about anything. He's like, you're like, this is like, this is the situation to panic. And I will never forget that because I, I, I look at my son, Tyler, and that's how he is at 19 years old. He's really chill, really relaxed. Doesn't let anything get to him. He's like, Beautiful. it's all going to be great. Right. And I often wonder like at what point do we change? Because I think almost all kids are like that, right? Yeah. Almost all teenagers are like that. And they'll remind us like, hey, look, this is not a big deal. And they've been on the surf longer, shorter than we have, right? But they've got it figured out, it seems like. They've got but, it figured uh, out at five, three. They, right, they've got it figured out at five. You can learn a lot from a five and a six-year-old, right? So going back to this bottle of Prosecco and the challenge that it had here, the same thing is going to happen and probably has happened in your business already, but you can reset. I had to reset in my mind yesterday and think about everything that could pop, some of the things that could possibly happen if I allowed this one situation, a small, tiny situation. My, my wife probably totally forgot about it now. That's how small it was, right? But a small thing could have turned into, who here has ever heard the saying, don't uh, turn a uh, molehill into a mountain? Yeah, yeah. Right? David's got his hands up. I see Nancy shaking her head. So this small thing that happens in your business, that may have happened last year in your business, right? You can really start all over again. You can do a do-over. In my head yesterday, I had to say, Ty, you're letting a bottle of Prosecco go crazy on you. This is what's going on in my head, like in 15 seconds. Started laughing. I said, okay, do over. Just as we would have at five, six, seven years old when we're playing this game of hide and seek and someone finds you and you lose and they're like, no, 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 I want to do over. We At any moment, we could have these do overs, right? There's some things last year with my health that didn't serve me. And I'm like, okay, do over. And like you, Caroline, I don't really do New Year's resolutions. I'm like, okay, the moment that it comes into play, but I get the thought, this is when I put it in place. I don't need to wait, not not to, to downplay that, if anyone does, but I don't need to wait two months, three months, two weeks. I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to start challenging myself right now, right? Um, and you guys can do that. Like, There's no one who says that you cannot do it. That's why we do these MMMs to give you that motivation and that encouragement, because it's it's challenging trying to do it on your own. You're going to be an alien trying to do it on your own. I guarantee you. I don't even know what your household is like, but if you want to do something that's outside of the ordinary, outside of realms of okay, you're going to be the alien and you're going to feel like you're an alien. You're going to feel like you're alone. That's why we do these MMMs. That's why we do KCF Live, which is coming up uh, next week, by the way. Ooh, we you know, so if, if you guys have, next week. yeah, it's coming up uh, next Friday. So look, we don't do these events just to do them. We do these because we know what it feels like to be on the other side, to, to need that encouragement, to, to constantly need the, the momentum of having a community, of having someone say it's possible. We've got a student. So there's a student. And man, I wish I could say what her numbers are right now. But let's just say that she's qualified for a gold plaque. So she reached out to Caroline and I over the weekend Right. And she's like, look, these are what my numbers are. And she wasn't always at that. I remember interviewing her uh, and she was at like fifteen hundred bucks a month or something like that. Now she's literally 10 X that number without. Uh, and again, I can't give you what the number is. And she she sent me a, a Facebook message. She, she says, um, I think she's here. I think she is. Oh, is she really? Okay. No, 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 she's not here. No. OK, that would have been really cool. Um, yeah, I know. She says, I just wanted to reach out and tell you that I officially hit X amount in sales for my Kindle business this month. Thank you for inspiring us to keep at it. Thank you for inspiring us to keep at it. And then I go back and, you know, tell her that that's amazing. You know, 
I knew you could do it. And then she says, thanks, Ty. It is exciting. I appreciate you all sharing this business with me. It's made a huge impact for me. Right? This is why we do the PCF Live. This is why we ask you guys to come back over and over and over again. Because you are going to need those resets. You Just like I had to reset myself with the bottle of Prosecco yesterday, you are going to go through some things where your business may not be where it is right now. You're going to need a reset in terms of the reason why you got started. You're going to need to be reminded of the thing that got you excited about this thing. That's what KCF Live does. That's why we hold these three-day events. So if you haven't registered, I advise that you go grab your ticket. It's kcflive.com. Go in and register for free. You don't even have to buy a ticket if you don't want to. You know, you course, know the person, uh, the person you, I, I've got to catch up with you, actually. I know we're going to catch up soon. But the person that you just said has also agreed to come on stage with me. Yes. Um, and and so that's really, really exciting. And uh, we're going to be able to talk about something that very much excites me because this person doesn't spend money on advertising. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, I believe in spending money on advertising, believe me. Um, but she's also done the um, a wonderful organic job. Mm. And she's going to share some of that with us because I'm like, can you share, can you share? Because I'm like, um, I want I want to share some of this, which is going to be particularly good for people starting out um, when they, uh, you know, it's much nicer, I think. And it doesn't it's not always possible when you're starting out in your business. You sort of make a loss for a bit until you get into profit with any business, I'm sure. But it's lovely if you can just start out your business where, um, you know, you, you when you do get to that uh, profit, you start obviously reinvesting back in. Um, but sometimes sort of advertising is taken from us if it's if it's, you know, something a platform we're using, we can't use for a while or whatever. And then it gets you to be more creative about doing different some different things. So she's going to she's going to share some of that live um, with us. But uh, very, very exciting. And then um, I believe she's here. She's normally here. Um, no, she's not, she might not be here today. Can you guys guess goes. who it is? I wonder, we're not going to tell you who yeah, it is. She's quite. But I wonder if you guys can guess who it is. She's shyer, so a lot of people might be, uh, might yeah. not have seen her as as much recently. But yeah, yeah she's, uh, anyone guess? Uh, nope, no, not not so far. We've got some good, so good names in there. People that are really close, yeah. But yeah, no, yeah. no one's guessed so far. Ah, yeah, the yeah. people, those people are, are, will get there for sure. Yep. But yeah, it's not those people. So that's just, I'm so excited. But she's, she, I love it when people sort of are quiet and then they come out with um, sort of success and, and results. And and our wonderful Erin, who's on her way as well, um, she's also coming on stage with me and doing, we're doing a training session this time, not just a chat. So it's going to be Kendall great. Villa. This This live is probably, yes. Yeah. I think this live is going to be the best ever yet. And we always say that every time we yeah. because they always get better and better. But what a way to start the new year. And, you know, when you were talking like that, I was thinking, you know, we had none of this. We, we had I had a great program when I started this program. But we didn't get have all these extra things. Yeah. Oh, no, you did physical lives, didn't you, before my time? You did some of those and they were We great. did, but the, even with the physical lives, they're limited, right? Because not everyone's playing. Yeah, and, and the cost right. of travel for many people if they're starting yeah. the business as well, if they're not in the U.S., Mm -hmm. And even if they are, um, the it, it made me think. Gosh, you know, the the if if I'd have had this at the beginning, pretty sure I'd have gone even faster, um, and felt even better, um, because as I was building my business, a lot of my business was built out of pain, mm -hmm. <laughs> and when I was building it, I did feel very very isolated. Even though we had the a really great Facebook group, but it was very I was very heavily focused on looking in there not posting yep. and then doing all the fast pass calls um which were amazing so with marty and josh doing those with with ty but now when we've got all the lives and we've got all these extra webinars that you do yep. um and then the money morning meetup every monday it just it's that support is is so important when you're building your business because even if you have got supportive people and my kids are really supportive other people aren't um but my yeah. kids are but it's still, you still feel isolated sometimes because no one's in your head with your goals and no one loves your business, even your kids that are benefiting from it. No one loves your business like like you do. Um, and 
sometimes I, I you know sometimes I say to myself oh my god I feel so alone you know I feel, but but I but knowing that I've got all of the p- lovely people that I mean that message oh. me um for Christmas and New Year I haven't even got back to everyone yet and all the people in the community is huge because that stops us from stopping when times get hard and just continuing and believing um which is why it's great that the person I was just about to say a name is, you know, has qualified for um, a gold plaque as Zoltan did last year, yeah. I, I think, because yeah. it just makes people know that, you know, you don't have to be in the limelight. You can you can do this quietly, but you've got the community there for support. And she was very much taking all that support from the community. It's huge. Yeah, and it's, it's, it speaks to repetition, right? And just, it speaks to the environment. It speaks to being in the environment that you need to be because you come to one of these events and it could be one speaker, maybe it could be one idea, it could be one reminder. As I talked about like this past year, 2023, I started going to seminars again. And it's been explosive for me in terms of business. It's been explosive for me in terms of creativity, but like just getting in that environment, like because one speaker, one idea could like literally turn you into the next person that hits a milestone. That's it. And I think what 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 we'll do, and I'm really guilty of this, is when it comes to an event, I'm like, oh my God, do I want to commit the time to it? Do I want to pay the money? Right? I'm thinking about what I'm going to, I'm thinking about that fear of loss, what I might lose versus what I'm going to gain. Because I am I always get, whenever I take myself and I say, I'm going to do it, regardless of how uncomfortable it might be to go to the event, regardless of how uncomfortable it might be to spend the time away from my family, regardless of how uncomfortable it might be to, to lock myself away in this zone, I always, I have, I cannot, I cannot think of a single event that I have gone to where it was not a benefit. Why did not your new people. networking? You all your networking. We've had people on the MMM from, and we've got yeah. some coming that will come on this year as well. From yeah. new people you've met at new the, people, at yeah, the, at the events. It's so crucial. Yeah, events are on my diary, and just you know, remember, guys, we can we can the business is a business expense yeah. going to an event. So I'm definitely going to do that because it's very easy to become a little bit of a mole um and um hermit is a better word isn't it mole probably means something different and um, bit of a hermit in your own little world <laughs> my own little office um and then you know not realize that you you know you you haven't been face to face in person reacting uh working with people work so with you. yeah gone to uh out yesterday right for the three different things i yes. really would have been great staying home 100 percent would have loved it that's what we normally do we'll, we normally stay home we did it last year we i mean we've always done it. we hardly go out uh, we used to go out to church sometimes for new years and things like that but i'm glad that i got out of it because i we went in and we saw some great family members i met some new people we had a lot of good times making memories and laughter played some incredible games, games that I didn't even, like board, new board games that I didn't even know existed. And it was just a really good time. And I was thinking about it on the drive home. I was, this is what I really was not looking forward to, was the hour drive there and then the hour drive back, especially because I knew we were going to be out late. Yeah. But I don't regret it. Like, this is what I mean. So, Every time you push yourself past something that gets you out of your comfort zone, you almost will never regret it. You almost will never regret it. Um, and also, Caroline, you know, oh, sorry, I was going to say, no, I was going to say also, it's so important when you are choosing whichever business you're doing, and many people here are doing mm-hmm. multiple ones, um, to really choose something that you love because. When I was away, I was I was sort of checking. I, I like to touch my business every day, even if it's just sort of catching up with the editor or finding out what the writers are doing or whatever. And I was always in touch with people. Um, but I, part of me was so determined to have a complete break that I felt a little bit off. Um, and when I got back in my office, I'm honestly, I can't tell you, I had a great time away. It was amazing. But when I got back, I was so happy. Because I was like doing all the exciting things that I love doing. So I love publishing books. I find everything. I get excited when the cover comes in from the designer. I don't care. I'm going to I'm going to like look at it straight away. 
Yeah. I don't care what. I just I still get excited about You're all excited. those different yeah. things. Oh my gosh, it's the for me, it's been the easiest thing I've ever done and the most exciting. You know, just the the uh, unpredictability sometimes of it and lots of things like that. I love it. So I was well, we, I was working with Maliha the next day. I said to her, "Oh my gosh, I'm so happy that we're like doing this. We need to unpack." But we came straight in, sort of sorting out this other book to get on after the the Boxing Day thing. And then I was planning out another series, another pen name. And, it, and that is, and I thought, gosh, you know, I, I love, I've never done anything in my life work-wise where I love, there are bits of it that are boring, but I, I delegate everything I don't want to do anyway, but yeah. that I love doing. Um, and, and then it made me feel, I, it's irrespective of where we all are. It just made me feel so grateful that, you know, again, it's just this gratitude that I used to commute six hours a day. I wouldn't be able to be here for mom if she needs me. And she needs me at the moment because it's wow, she's yeah. not well. Um, and it's tough, but you sort of back and forth and you you sort of can mix it all up and you just take that for granted after a while. Um, and you take for granted the fact that you really do have complete control over your day. So if you go it becomes a new normal. Yeah. And it's yeah. not just about it's not just about money. It's about just the freedom to just be working in your own home or in a coffee shop or library or wherever you choose. It's huge when you get to that point, if you decide that's what you want, because mm. I know many people that are building their business with jobs they love. And, um, you know, Manda Lippman's a solicitor, you know, a lawyer. She she's a great lawyer and she probably doesn't want to give that up um and we've got doctors haven't we and we've got so many people doing all sorts of different things in the community but for me I didn't I wasn't enjoying my work after a while and I wanted to do something different um because I was you know you just I was just capped in terms of what I could what I could earn and controlled and I don't like control at all um I push against that all the time so it was just a reminder that, you know, we're so lucky, aren't we, to be here, whether we're building our business alongside a job or another business, but we're so lucky to be here because it's the best time in the world now to build things online. And there are so many options um, out there. Yeah. But choose one you love, you know, I, I don't mean I, way every day, but I mean, choose one yeah. that you love. I think that we're lucky and just even knowing that this exists, like this model exists, right? Digital publishing in whatever form um, that you're doing is it exists because a lot of people don't know that it exists. And then with that, you get some freedom. You get um, different versions of freedom. It could be freedom of finances in a different way. It could be freedom of time in a different way. And it becomes your new normal. Like I could... If you take me back 20 years ago, you know, I could never have imagined that this is what my life would have been like. Like to, to, to have the different freedoms of doing things that I want to do, um, being able to, whatever it might be, right? Having control of my day was before it was directed by someone else, right? The, my employer, the company that I worked with, uh, they told me when you know, you had to be at work when you had to leave, when you could go on lunch, right? What vacation time you could take, how many sick days you have, right? There's a totally different level of freedom when it comes to digital publishing. And I think that that's something that we need to all be grateful for and uh, appreciate. So we're coming up top of the hour. Oh, what'd you, did you have something there, uh, Caroline? I just had the quote. I just said exactly what you said that, you know, now we've just got the mirror. Can I have a day off? Yeah, thank you. Right, right. <laughs> Can I go out for a walk? Yeah. Thank you. I love it's you. you. Uh, yep. It's you. I got our quote. I don't think we shared it, did we? Did you share no, it at the yet. very beginning? Not yet. So can um, I end it up? It's a great right. topic. I think you're talking about, oh. you know, starting the oh, new year. That's me. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Oh, that's our that's your uh, uh, slap here. Yeah. I can't yeah. I can't switch it off. I'm no, gonna no, mute on, you I'm out real quick until you and then unmute yourself. So look, guys, 2024, here's what you should do. Go in and make sure that you have your goals written down, right? So go goals are the, the, the most direct behavior in its simplest form. So, and, and getting really clear on these things. What do I want to do, right? Ask yourself a couple of questions, like five questions. What do I want to do? Who do I want to become? What do I want to see? Uh, what do I want to have? Where do I want to go? And then under each one, 
write down several long-term goals, write down several short-term goals and don't think about how it's going to happen. Like don't stress over it. Just write them down, right? To create the habit. And you get into the habit of doing this consistently. Your goals will drive you to the direction that you want to go in, in all areas. It doesn't matter your finances, your health, your relationships, whatever it may be, right? Your business, but you have to get into the habit of writing down your goals, right? And, and again, don't think about the failures that you may have had in the past. Don't think about it may be unrealistic to other people, right? Don't think about it being unrealistic to you. Th these self-limiting beliefs, that we often are hit with when we write out our goals, they're not based on reality. They're simply like projections that most of us believe in that seem to be really real, like extremely real. And the hardest part of all of this is just taking that first step. So even if you've never laid out goals before, or even if you did and you kind of fell off, right? And you didn't, you, you haven't written out goals in months or in years, go in and start out today by writing out your goals, those five things. What do I want to do? Who do I want to become, right? What do I want to see? Where do I want to go? And what do I want to have? And think about those things. And that's part of your reset plan for 2024, right? Um, Caroline, and I review those all the time. Yeah, that was so funny. I just like literally played a voicemail, but it wouldn't work when I was trying to stop it. I've got about seven or eight messages from people with laughing faces on the call. So thank oh, you wow, guys. Okay. guys. That's how good this community is. And my daughter was laughing upstairs, Maliha, who's on the call. Um, uh, do you know those five things? Would you just pop those in the chat? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, me, unless we've uh, already done that. So I just thought they, they're yeah. great reminders. So do you look at those every day, every week, once a month? Do you revisit them? Yeah, um, so... I make the attempt. I don't look at them every day, but in the morning is ideally. So five days, six days out of a week, I'll look at them and I keep them on my phone, right? Um, it's good to either write them down on a notepad or something like that and look at them first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning when you get up while it's fresh, right? And then go to sleep looking at these things as well so that your subconscious can work on them. You should also, also be writing out your goals on a regular basis. This is what I meant by getting into the habit of it, right? Because you can write them out every single day. There's nothing wrong with writing them out every single day. And when you do that, you're going to find new things that you add on to it. The most successful people will oftentimes have hundreds of things on your goal sheet. Hundreds of things. Not five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things. And this is because over time, it accumulates. You'll see, oh my God, I want to go to Disney World in Paris. That was, that was one of the things on our um, goal list. Well, my, my wife and my daughter's goal list, right? I was like, okay, it could partially be on my goal list. But this past year, we scratched it off. And that, that is even more fun because now you have to become an individual to get to that goal. You have to become someone totally different to get to that goal. Whatever the goal may be, I want to go publish my first book. You have to become the individual that is now a publisher of books. Because at the moment right now, if you have never published a book, you're not that individual. So the fun yeah. of this growing into that person that you must become in order to make the goal something that becomes reality, if that makes sense. Yeah. And also, you know, I've got some of those mirror pens, glass pens, mirror pens. Yeah. Those yep. five things. I'm going to write my five answers on there, actually. Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, and because I think also for me, I forget, I just get busy, busy, busy and forget. So I think for me, just being able to visually see things, you know, who do I want to become? It's just a reminder to yeah. be the best, best you every single day and have those things so you can see them. So when if you pop those five questions in the chat. Yeah, I put, yep, then, I put them in. Um, and and then, writing them down, look, I'm going to see if I can turn them on to a bit. But you guys can see, like, I've got these glass. You see this glass board that's there? Oh, so nice. I've got four of them. Yeah. Right. Lay it out. And I could go in and I can write what my, you know, I could, I could go in and I could use like my glass markers and things like that. And I also have a glass desk that this, uh, com this computer, it's actually a white, it's not a glass desk. It's a white, white desk desk. Yeah. It's a white, it's, nice. it's actually one of these, but it's a desk. That's a great uh, idea. Yeah. It's a standing yeah. desk that has the whiteboard built into okay. it. Glass board actually it's the ceramic. But so you like can that. always write. So I'm always writing down. Now, I prefer to write my goals down on just a regular um, eight and a half by 11 notebook or in my phone. Right. 
So that way you can look at them and then you're writing them over and over and over again. All right, guys. Happy New Year again, 2024. Go into the Facebook group. Let us know what your biggest takeaway has been, all right, from this episode here. And don't forget, like, you can restart at any moment. You can restart 100%. If you fell off on your diet, if you fell off on your book publishing, if you fell off on your micro office uh, course build-outs and, and membership programs, you could start all over again, right? There's no one who says if you try once and you don't fulfill, you can't ever go back and try again. There's no law there. We make it up. Right. So I want you guys to get out of that. Start with goal setting. Say that this is going to be my new year. This is going to be my reset year. You could, you know, one of the things that I'll tell my wife and I'll leave this with you really quickly is I say, look, every week, every two weeks, I want to become a new version of myself. I want to become a different version of myself. So she may come in and she might say something like, you know, well, you don't like uh, string bands. Who knows? Let me try them again. I don't know. Hopefully I'm not the same guy that I was five years ago. That's no growth, right? That's no progress right there. Right? So you just don't know. And you try them, maybe you might like them. I still don't like the other things. We know <laughs> what they are. Right, I'm not going to say in the, It's going in the chat. It's going to... right, they say, actually, right. if, you start, if you start every morning um, cleaning your teeth, as soon as you wake up with a different hand that you normally do it with, so mm. left hand, if you're right-handed, that's really interesting yeah. in terms of trying new things and reprogramming your brain. Um, you watch your life changing when you start to do the opposite of what you're what you're comfortable with. Quotes before programming, you leave, right? Yeah, We're programming. programming. Yeah, yeah, reprogramming, and that's yeah. you know being every week. You know who are. How am I going to be an even better version of myself? I mean, this is a balance, though, because we do need to be kinder to ourselves mm -hmm. rather than, oh, you know, I haven't done this and I'm not very good at that and I should have done this. I yep. mean, how many of us do that? Women are really bad at that, uh, um, aren't we, ladies? Um, so actually, gosh, I'm I'm great. Life's great. I'm great. But how am I going to be even better this week? You know, the yeah. best, happier, better, more lighthearted, not so serious, whatever whatever those things are. Quote the quote for today before we go um, is is a short one um, by Marcus Garth, eighteen eighty seven to nineteen forty is his years. A Jamaican activist, and it is with confidence you have won before you have started. Yeah. So with confidence you have won before you have started. Confidence is all of these things we talk about. It's all about self confidence, isn't it? It's all about self-belief self and self-confidence, which also can be programmed into you through repetition. Yes. Oh, all right, yeah. guys. Have a great one. We'll see you uh, on next MMM on Monday. And then we'll see you all at KCF Live. Go in and register right now. KCFLive.com. Go grab a ticket. We kick off next Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Hope to see you there. And then go into the Facebook group. Let us know, or if you're watching this video on YouTube or on social media somewhere, let us know what was the one biggest takeaway that you got from this. Put it into the comments box. We're also streaming this live on Facebook right now. So if you're watching on Facebook, what's that one big takeaway that you got from this event? Whether it's something that Caroline said, that I said, or maybe it was just an aha or a reminder for you, go in and post it on Facebook right now. And by doing that, or by posting it on, on social media, wherever you're watching this video, it's going to help our algorithm. It's going to help this video get more visibility. So thank you. Have a good one and happy new year. Happy new year, everyone. Bye-bye.